Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our final webinar in our Bulletproof Your Business series. Uh, today we'll be discussing plan for continuity. Um, the usual suspects are on the panel again, David Lees, uh, Joint CEO of Eintree, and Stephen Cohen, um, the Business Development and Strategy of, uh, Director of Eintree, apologies. And then we also welcome Troy Cheeseman from Canada. Uh, Dave, are you going to explain a little bit more about uh, plan for continuity in the product and sure. where Troy fits in? Sure. Can we move to the, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, second uh, Yako's comments. Welcome everybody, the guys that are watching and I'm hoping that most of you who joined us this afternoon have watched uh, at least a couple of the other webinars in the series. As, as Yako said, this is the last one. Um, I think uh, when we talk about P4C, uh, well, before I talk about P4C, what I'm seeing is that um, although, as I always say, we designed this series of webinars before the COVID crisis hit, it's just becoming more and more relevant as, as the lockdown period um, continues. And I'm not going to talk about the stuff we've covered already. If you didn't attend those webinars, the recordings are available. What I like about P4C and why we included P4C in this series is P4C is the product that kind of ties everything together. And when I hand over to Troy, I'll introduce him in a second. I'm sure once he goes through um, his presentation, you'll understand why so it ties everything together. Um, and I might, have, might be stealing some of your thunder, Troy, but it's something you just said in the last few minutes, that this is really a, it's a planning tool. The name kind of says it, and, and Troy will explain to you what it is. But it's, it's a planning tool that I think this is the perfect time for people who are wondering, well, what's going to happen when we get to back to whatever the new normality is? We're going to need some kind of continuity planning, disaster planning, mitigation uh, procedures in our companies. And this is the tool that's going to help you um, implement those, the, the, those kind of plans. Um, this tool was written by Iron Tree. The architect is, is our partner at Iron Tree, Ty Chesele, who, who I think is a, a software planning genius. Um, and what, what happened is we actually have partnered with Troy's company called uh, Cloud Oak, based in, in um, Toronto, uh, who cover the North American market, who, who, who saw this product and, and thought there was so much opportunity in the international space. And it's actually been launched internationally and we've, we've sold it to quite a few um, managed service provider and other companies already. And Troy's the guy that's uh, responsible for evangelizing and, and, um, and selling this product. Um, and that's why we thought it would be apt for him to, to actually talk about it today. And that's why this, uh, this webinar is actually at this time in the afternoon, because obviously it's sort of early, earlier in the day for Troy. So Troy, um, it's over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And guys, uh, very happy to be here. Um, yeah, so uh, let's the save the best for last, right? That's uh, that's uh, that's why we're hopefully here and is uh, doing this this product and as the last of the webinar series. Um, um, what I'll do is I'll talk to you know how we uh, are presenting the product uh, on an international side because what we what really impressed us uh, about uh, the product when we, when we first started looking at it and the opportunity is the fact that there is a global challenge with the small to medium business and medium enterprise and the fact that they effectively up until uh, we feel this product has been brought to market they've effectively no ignored small to medium business uh, or sorry uh, business continuity planning and we took us we all kind of sat around the table and and so to decide why you know why was this a problem and we knew that within the industry that we we're providing servicing uh, managed service providers, resellers, cloud service providers, et cetera, um, that there was, you know, a big void uh, as it related to enterprise type products and their business continuity planning and what the small to medium business was essentially ignoring and effectively didn't do anything. And we really identified uh, about five or six points as to why um, businesses were ignoring business continuity plans. And, us living today in the COVID world, I mean, let's put that aside for a second, right? Because I think that just really emphasizes the importance of a product like this. But leading up to this type of event, um, you know, the businesses ignored business continuity planning for a lot of different reasons. 
One we had identified and coined as the business continuity planning ecosystem, and I'll show you a picture in the next slide here. The main reason is that, you know, leading up till today, or the release of plan for continuity, that entire ecosystem was manual, all right? And if you compare that ecosystem, creating plans, uh, coordinating an entire event, remembering and posting sort of what happened uh, in any event, in any scenario, um, and you got to think beyond disaster recovery, okay? Think about holistic business continuity planning and impacts to your business. Everything about it has not changed in about 20 years as a process. If you look at backup and recovery, and Iron Tree has some great partnerships, and a lot of MSPs have great partnerships with uh, organizations that have provided backup and recovery products to clients. There's been a lot of advancement in that technology space over the last five, seven years. But business continuity planning, that whole front end, it's been ignored. It's not changed. The process is as it was, like I said, about 20 years ago. And because of that manual nature, business, small business, one, they don't have the time uh, and the effort to put into creating those plans. Because if you're going through that manual process today, it is daunting for businesses. Uh, and that's simply because a lot of them just have the genuine lack of expertise. If you go to take on and creating a business plan today and, or a business continuity plan, and let's say it's, you'll see plans in here like ransomware attack, but even a fire evacuation plan, some of those different types of plans that are basic, you gotta download a template, you gotta you know, work through it. It takes a lot of time and effort. Now there's an alternative uh, out there today, not necessarily in the way of what, how this product has simplified everything, but you can go and get a business continuity consultant if you're a business. And even if you're a, a reseller or a, a service provider, and I, I, just from a North American pr perspective, I can tell you that, that uh, the output of that entire effort will be anywhere between 10 to $15,000 US. The client gets a nice big three ring binder that's 50 pages long and it's a nice big continuity plan. And they take that three ring binder and they put it in their drawer and it's out of date the second it leaves the printer, right? It's still a manual paper-based process. And because of that, for managed service providers or resellers are on the call today, throughout that entire industry, that main provider like Iron Tree, who service small business and medium enterprise, it's very, very difficult to generate monthly reoccurring revenue from a complex manual process like business continuity planning. So a lot of partners, have effectively ignored providing this as a service to their clients. And a lot of times if they have done something, they maybe created a, a DR plan, you know, where the client says, look, I need something. Can they, they got in, the partner got in with table stakes like uh, cybersecurity or even backup and recovery. And the client goes, listen, I need a, I need some sort of plan. And the partner cobbles together a DR plan, gives them the paper. The client feels that they're satisfied. The partner's not made monthly reoccurring revenue from it, mostly value add. And then again, we turn the page, out-of-date documents sitting in someone's drawer. But the one thing that we've seen, especially in the North American international market, and I think you guys would see it as well from clients and resellers, is the simple fact that compliance is now reaching all the way down to the small business. I worked at Citigroup for 13 years. Citigroup is a global financial services organization. I went through audits. I created company-wide disaster recovery scenarios and plans. And we paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for some simple like call tree software that automated some calling for us. But it was an immensely complex effort. And we did that because compliance, regulatory compliance that was driving that requirement. Now, it's all the way down to small business. So you got GDPR in, the, in North America. We have the HIPAA, the U.S. suit, excuse me. In Canada, there's a mandate called PEPIDA. And we all know from a compliance perspective that the pendulum is not going to swing the other way. It's not going to get easier. It's not going to become less rigorous when these, when these types of regulations are starting to be imposed. It's only going to go the other way. And, you know, I've been jumping on a lot of peer group sessions um, with many service providers, especially in North America. And their biggest fear post COVID is that there's a lot of relaxing that's happening from, especially from a remote uh, work access, that's some relaxing that's happening within some of the compliance aspects within uh, their clients because of the dramatic impact of COVID. But their fear is that when everybody comes back to work, that this pendulum is going to swing even more now to the right. It's, it's going to become, you know, uh, a compliance is going to be, more difficult to deal with, and it's going to reach even farther down. So this is the kind of the manual representation of what we call the, the, the current business continuity planning ecosystem, right? And it's nice. 
easily laid out in nice three squares. And when we, when we talk about plan for continuity, we always break it down into these three stages, right? The ability to create those plans, automating the actual event itself, and then what we call post-incident, right? Who did what? Where were we successful? Where did we fail? All the communication, things like that. In today's world, as I've highlighted, it's manual and it's complex, right? And it's all definitively um, separated creating plans, there's no logical flow as it flows into the event, et cetera, because of the entire manual nature of, of the event. But if I wanted to create a plan today, whether I'm a partner or I'm a client, again, I got to comb the internet. I got to create that detail myself. Um, I got to spend a lot of time creating because these documents, you know, uh, are not simple. A uh, perfect example, we're, we're working with an opportunity in Canada. It's an insurance organization. They have 500 remote locations across the country. And a lot of their locations are five and 10 person type uh, shops when they get outside of their, their corporate uh, environment. But they have a 68 page business continuity plan that they paid a lot of money for. And the corporate environment runs a 68 page continuity plan as well as the 10 person shop. And that's not logical. Okay. But that's the, in a manual nature in creating uh, paper-based documents, that's the nature of the ecosystem today. In the, in the event itself, it's all manually coordinated. People are emailing and texting, calling. And again, the world is, is virtual. It's always, it's been moving that way and remote. But when you look at a small business, they have managed service providers who are providing some services. They have maybe some fractional HR services, accounting services that they may outsource. They don't have all these people on staff anymore. If you're trying to coordinate an event, any event, and uh, we'll talk about you know, uh, that when we, when we get into the demonstration, it's complex. You're calling the MSP. You're trying to find out what's going on with your apps. You're trying, it's, it's just very, very difficult for the small business and the client uh, to coordinate all that stuff and as well take care of their staff through this type of event. And then in the end, when you finally get an opportunity to take a breath uh, and kind of get through that event itself, you got to remember everything that's happened right? because part of that ISO standard of business continuity planning is post-incident. Okay? Everything always doesn't go perfectly. So how do you remediate the problems, right? And how do you remember what happened specific to each action and step in the plan? In a manual ecosystem, forget it. It's lost. And post-incident, nine times out of 10, if not almost every time, is something that is very, very rarely done and documents are never updated. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you plan for continuity here in a, in a moment. But when we talk with all our partners and clients, we have some rules and guidelines around that manual ecosystem, and we want you to think differently now, all right? And here's, here's point number one, mean, meaning that a disaster recovery plan is not a business continuity plan. Now, we've discovered this as we've talked to a lot of partners and that they use DRP, disaster recovery plans and business continuity plans interchangeably. And, and to a business continuity person, that's like they pull their hair out. Okay, a, dis a disaster recovery plan is a subset of a business continuity plan. All right, so think, think in, in that terms. Think beyond the R, as we say. Just for some of my friends who get creative, uh, business continuity plans are not called BCDR plans, and a lot of that comes from um, vendors who have muddied the water around messaging, i.e., uh, like a business disaster recovery product, a backup and recovery product, those types of solutions, incredibly important. Okay, and an absolute base essential for your business. But a lot of marketing has gone into calling these products all in one business continuity solutions, and they're not. Okay, they're disaster recovery solutions. And uh, we have a line in here if you're a service provider, you should have your own business continuity plans. And it was surprising to us when we really started to bring the product out into the channel that we would talk to MSPs who would have and service providers who were servicing regulatory. Uh, clients, i.e. HIPAA in the U.S. specifically, and they were signing these agreements saying, yeah, yeah, it's called business associates agreements. Yeah, no, we're good. We provide HIPAA type services. We're certified, all that good stuff. But they didn't have their own business continuity plans, which is an essential as part of that regulatory. So part of that own business for service providers, you really should have your own continuity plans. And this was something that we used to say every day, every time we did a demo. But in today's world with COVID, I don't, I don't think we need to say this anymore. But you know, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of really emphasize it. Any business can have a full continuity of, uh, impact and event and your infrastructure is just fine. Your backup is running, all the different pieces are there, but it can still have a very negative impact on, on continuity. COVID, 
remote home, all that good stuff. It just emphasizes that point. So as uh, David highlighted, uh, this is what Plan for Continuity solves. Um, and it solves it for their end clients and it solves it for service providers who are, uh, and resellers who are servicing the small business. <clears throat> so when we look across that ecosystem, I want you to think along the lines of those three boxes. Okay, so creating plans. So you can create any continuity plan in minutes. Now, for different regions, because we are working internationally, um, we have different demos. Today, I'm going to show you the ransomware attack plan. Um, one of our most popular plans in the U.S., and this is just a statement of fact, it's not, it's not a judgment statement, is what's called the active shooter. So you think of extreme situations and then minor situations from a continuity event side, it's covered within the fact that any client and any partner can draw down on a template and in minutes have a full-fledged ransomware attack plan, uh, attack plan ready to go. The other side, though, it's not just about the templates. And this is the part that impressed us the most about the system, is that now when you move into that second box of automating or coordinating event, the technology that's embedded with every, every plan, the ability to broadcast the cell, phone, uh, cell phones, an incredibly unique piece of technology called roll call, the ability, what we say, to virtually identify the state of an employee, and I'll show you how that comes together, and then what's called the call tree, this makes it incredibly unique because it automates the process. It automates the business process that is the continuity event itself. It will email and text the MSP. And then the MSP has to come in and action items and say, I've completed this, this failed, et cetera. And what's unique about it is that in a single console, the client will see all these transactions happening in real time. And that prevents them having to call who's doing what, trying to trace and track across all the different providers that are providing services that's relative to the continuity of their business. And because all that tracking is happening in real time and it's being tracked and recorded, they instantly transpose that now into a time-stamped post-incident report. And the reason why that's incredibly valuable is because at the end of the event, the client doesn't need to remember what happened. They don't even need to remember it at an action two, step three failed, or the restore didn't go exactly as we had planned moving to another uh, location, had some bumps. It's all tracked and recorded in real time and then transposed into that report. And what I really liked about how we've collectively now brought this product to market is it's specifically priced for the SMB, right? Uh, I've worked in major enterprise for a lar large part of my career. I can tell you that there are enterprise products that are out there uh, that kind of do uh, what this product does on a whole, how it automates that entire ecosystem. But simply put, they are well, well out of the price range of any medium business and medium enterprise. And this product, from a practicality perspective, is designed specifically for that. So a lot of opportunity for uh, resellers to provide uh, a, an automated solution for business continuity planning from start to finish, cross creating plans, automating the entire event, and the host incident uh, timestamp and, and tracking. Uh, all within a very affordable price for a small to medium business. So I'm going to actually show you the app in action here, and I'll take a quick breath while I transition because I want to make sure that you, you guys can, um, Jacko, maybe you, just let me know you guys can still see my screen. It's all good, Troy. We can still see everything. All right, fantastic. All right, we'll give you guys a quick demo. Um, and you know, you want a deeper dive, I'm just gonna go and activate a plan and show you how that works. We'll, uh, but if you want a deeper dive, of course, um, you can reach out to Iron Tree and book some time. Every plan has two actionable uh, items and you'll see, again, we'll go across that ecosystem, okay? Creating plans, automating the event and post incident. Every plan has the ability to be activated and the ability to be simulated. What that means is client comes in tomorrow from an activation side, the sprinklers have all gone off in their building or there's some sort of event they can pull out their phone and click activate. And then they can watch the product automate the entire event for them. And then there's the ability to simulate. Simulate is effectively you're saying that this is a test. The plan will function the exact same way. Um, and you can say, don't text, don't email, et cetera. You get to toggle all those options. But at the end of the day, we're gonna note the fact that this is a test, right? And that's the difference between activation and simulation. Now you can schedule activations and schedule simulations within every plan. And the, why, the reason why you'd want to do that is where we see a lot of uh, new options coming in with the product is actually automating a business process. So as an example, 
one of the plans that you'll see is available is actually not a continuity event at all. It's a cybersecurity quarterly audit that a partner and or a reseller can run with their client. And that will automate, walk everybody through the process of doing a cybersecurity quarterly audit, scheduling pen tests. Have you done this? Have you upgraded the firewall, et cetera? And it's a great way to validate because we're time stamping and tracking and record everything in the end of the event. It's a great way to validate you've been doing your due diligence with your client. And the reason why this is becoming popular from the business process side, we're seeing this more and more, is with cybersecurity insurance. And we have cybersecurity insurance organizations who are very interested in this solution now. Because of running a cybersecurity quarterly audit, partners were going to have the ability now to validate that they've been doing their due diligence. Eight months from now, if that client got whacked with ransomware, they can go to the report, validate that they've been doing their due diligence, and it'll expedite the claims process from the cybersecurity insurance side. Just an example of a business process that gets automated uh, versus just a straight up continuity event. So. These are the plans. Anything you'll see in the system, this is exactly what the interface looks like. The difference is, is I'm logged in as a reseller here or a managed service provider. I see the word customers because I can manage my multiple customers. It's multi-tenanted. But uh, if you're the end client logging in, this word is locations. And the reason is, is that a plan can manage one location or it can manage multiple locations. So you can have fire evacuation plans for every single location of your business if you have multiple locations, but then you can have corporate driven or multi-location driven plans as well. So it allows you to really isolate plans you want for uh, location specifically versus what you want to run across the entire company. The ability to start is very easy. I just literally click on copy plans. There's a set of global templates that are available, and this gives you that nice, easy starting point. And I'll show you the ransomware attack plan today. Where is it? It's up at the top. So I just click the radio button. I say copy the selected plan. Now, what you're going to end up seeing is a skeleton view of the plan itself. And you may look at this and go, wow, this, there's nothing here. I'm going to open this plan. I'm actually going to activate one of these plans as well. Um, and you'll get to see how much detail is actually in there. But to get started, it's easy. I give it a name. At this point in time, I can assign it to a location. Um, and there's different roles in the system. I'll very quickly highlight those, but I can assign a plan manager in my company, and then away we go, and we click Save. And it creates the plan. So I'm going to show you now the contents of that plan, and I'll very quickly talk about some of the system roles. <clears throat> the concept of roles within business continuity planning are consistent if, if from a manual perspective. And what I mean by that is you got to have someone who's designated to, you know, up to, uh, keep the plans up to date, like i.e. your plan manager, you know, it, there's roles like what's called a plan activator. So these are people who can you know, activate events. But in the case of our system roles, the way that this would work is they can activate a plan in the system, but they can't edit and update it. All right. The plan manager has the ability to create plans, create them for locations, add users and do those different types of things. There's even an option to have other people to be notified. So what a great role system role from that side is an event happens and you want someone to just be notified that an event has been declared. They don't have to do anything. They don't have any actions. They don't need to do any of those things. Um, but they have, you want them to be notified, C-level organization members in the company, compliance people, whatever the case may be, you can define them. So very easy to work with in the environment. You can see here that this plan has all the preamble and data provided, your probability impact, it's all predefined. All this can be edited, okay? I won't get into too much detail, but you can create hyperlinks, bold and text, but these were the actions that we had that you had seen in the skeleton view. Now, if I open those actions, you're going to see that there's steps and items and all this detail is predefined, right? Now, as an, as a client and as a, a, a reseller or a service provider, I can add actions very easy. Okay. I can add detail. I can drag and drop and reorder my actions. Okay. I can delete. And even within every action, there's the ability to add files. Okay. So you can add, if this is a, a, a particular point in an event, and rather having the, your staff or someone or the action owner have to go out and try to search for a particular document, you can add that file so you know that it's consistent every time. Perfect example, we have uh, clients that, from a Canadian perspective, that are in the legal uh, uh, cannabis industry. And they use, they're using it to automate an inventory management process on a nightly basis. And when they get to action number six, if there's a discrepancy in inventory, there's an actual regulatory document that has to be filled out immediately. They add that file. 
It ensures that the document's consistent. It takes the decisioning away from the client or from the, the in the person running the inventory. And that's really one of the really key advantages of what we're doing here and within this product. Being able to define action owners, steps, and details that's going to eliminate human error, that's going to minimize the decisioning that happens in an event, uh, it's going to really bring order to that chaos, and it's going to allow the client to see this transact in real time. All right, and you'll see that happen. So you get to see here that all the detail is provided, multiple steps, et cetera. This can be completely uh, updated and saved and create own templates, all that other good stuff. So it gives you an idea, guys, very briefly of how it is that you can start with a plan. And we have that across over you know, 20 plus templates that are available within the system from ransomware attack to all the way to something extreme like an active shooter event. So what I'll do now is we'll move from that first phase, which is creating plans, and we'll activate our demo. And this shortened demo here has a couple actions, and it has a broadcast and a roll call. So actually, I'll highlight on that. The ability to do uh, within the plan itself, and I talked about the technology, is broadcast, roll call, and call tree. And what that means is every action, from a call tree perspective, every action has an action owner whether they're inside the company or outside the company. So you can define that, i.e. managed service provider, someone else inside the organization, outside the organization. When the plan is activated, these people are roped in, they're emailed and text, and everybody is now notified of the event. Actions, though, can also be turned into what's called broadcasts and roll call. And that's the ability to broadcast this detail to people's cell phones within the company, outside the company, et cetera. And that's very simple. We hit this toggle button or the radio the button here, the checkbox. It'll enable it as a roll call. So what will happen in this case here, you'll see this in action. This will come to my cell phone, and I'll be able to acknowledge that I've received this uh, text in the way of my broadcast. The second feature that you can run off a of broadcast is the ability to do a roll call. And this is where we have defined actual state. You're able to identify the state of an employee. So really, what does that mean? But in the case of something extreme, like an active shooter event, you can define a roll call that asks people, are they, do they need help? Are they in a bad situation? From a ransomware perspective, we have the ability to basically broadcast out any message. And in our plan here today, we're broadcasting out, hey, absolutely disconnect all the computers. And from a roll call side, you can ask the end client, your staff member, have you disconnected your computer? Because all these buttons are free form, and I can create any state that I want, okay? Or did you disconnect? And now I can give it a color. And now these are the buttons that will go to someone's cell phone via link. And while the product is in real time automating the entire event, we will run a roll call and the client can respond. And while the product is now emailed and text the MSP and all those transactions are happening, successes, moving in within the, the continuity event itself, we'll see a nice little indicator that'll come up and we'll be able to identify exactly what's happened from a state perspective with that employee. So you're gonna be able to see that in action when I run the plan. So I will now go and activate a plan and we're gonna activate our ransomware attack plan. We'll filter it on my customer location and we'll go ahead and activate this plan. Once the plan is activated, and this can be scheduled as well and it'll automatically kick off, but I'm manually kicking off this ransomware attack plan today at this time, I can say it's a simulation, meaning that this is a test. And at this time, I can also even send a message to staff. Okay, so any continuity event, any plan operates the same way. I can send a custom message saying, hey, this is a test. Uh, you know, we're all, there's a real event, go to another building, whatever the case may be. And you're also defining how your action owners are gonna be notified. And in this case right here, we're gonna notify all our action owners, whether they're inside the company or outside the company, via email and text. All right, so it's very simple now. We click activate, and this is where we go from a template-driven system to what we call rapid notification. And this is where now you will get to see the client. This is the single console where they will get to see everything transact in real time. So we're going to do this one at a time, all right? We're going to take care of the actions, and then we'll have our roll call, and then we'll finish up our plan. But you'll watch. Everything here will happen now in real time as we track and record. So this action owner has been notified that an event has been declared. They come into the system. They say, yes, okay, I've done this. I'm doing this work. I'll say complete. I'm going to say that this actually failed. And then we'll complete the action. 
And you can see here, I'll put in a little note, that we've tracked and recorded everything now in real time. So as we're going through the plan, as it's going through the actions, the next action that's happened is now a broadcast with a little call. So now I did receive the notification on my cell phone indicating there is a ransomware attack. Please disconnect the device. And then I'm going to respond to the roll call. And I'm actually going to say, I need some help. Please send the technician. So in real time, I received this to my phone. The product has already now gone on to the next action owner. And if we were doing this, this was happening in a full event with all these action owners. There would be transactions happening here all the time. I'm doing this one at a time so you can see this happen. But I've responded to the event. My roll call indicator has gone up. And now I can actually very quickly identify who it is that needs help. So if you think of this in the way of extreme events, again, um, natural disasters, things along those lines, all right? Anything that you would want to do, the aspect of identifying how your staff are, fire evacuation plans, right? You want to identify if they're working from home. You want to identify in real time if they're at a coffee shop, if they're trapped in the building. This is a great way to do it. It's a really, really cool piece of technology that's uh, embedded within every plan. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll finish this because I want to show you guys the, as we've tracked and recorded, how we're mapping everything back to actions in the plan, post-incident, et cetera, okay? So we're down to our last action. You can see that we've tracked and recorded an immense amount of detail and I'll finish this off. And now as the plan manager, okay, as the client, as I've seen everything happen, I know the plan manager in that organization gets the final sign off. They get to eat, uh, eat, <laughs> excuse me. They get to finish the event and we'll put in a note. At this point in time, I can send a message to staff at this point in time at the end of the event as well. And then we're going to say complete the plan. And this is where we go from rapid notification and tracking in real time to what is the third phase in that third box, which is post incident review. And this is where we track and record and timestamp every element of the event itself. Okay, so if you see this report here, and this is stored in the cloud and it's stored there forever. So this is the plan we ran. We simulated, it was a simulation, so we noted that at the beginning of the event. We record and timestamp who started the plan, okay, and when it, was, when it started, when it finished, when the report was generated, all the details of the plan itself including if you've attached files, if you've created hyperlinks, et cetera. You can see we have a attached file here. And then we track and record, <coughs> excuse me, everything as it relates to the event itself. Successes, fails, communication sent to the event. So now all that post-incident testing, all that detail that happened, I don't need to remember as a client because we tracked and recorded it in real time and time stamped it, <coughs> excuse me. And then of course we track and record all the roll call responses, uh, those who responded and those who did not respond because uh, the detail of who didn't respond in a roll call is as equally as important as to those who have responded. And that in a span of let's say 15 minutes, we've walked you through an entire automated ecosystem of business continuity planning that I would offer prior to this product and prior to bringing this to market, that if this process was manually driven, this would take weeks, weeks to establish, manually driving the entire event itself. And within 15 minutes, we created a ransomware attack plan, ran through a rapid notification and created an entire post incident report. So I'll turn it back to uh, you guys around, the, that's the end of the demonstration. <laughs> Thanks, Troy. That was great. Uh, Steve, Yaka, do you want to say anything at this point? No. Um, uh, if I can just add, sorry, I'm just thinking about my previous life. Um, Troy, you used those words bringing order to chaos. Um, and that really hit home for me. Also, you know, when, when we, we had servers and uh, I think at one, we had about probably 80,000 businesses using our online system. And if my main programmers would have been on leave and let's say something would have happened to our main cloud server, I wouldn't have even known who to call, what to do. And, and, and then obviously being part of a huge corporate, there would have been accountability. What happened, who did what? This handles the accountability side. 
it, it, it handles actually from a practical perspective who needs to do what. So it, it covers all the bases for me and I just think it's a great solution for clients who appreciate what it does. And I think that in, in, in getting it to sell, um, it's really about getting clients to appreciate what it does, the way it communicates, the way it keeps an order trail of every single thing that happened is massively important. I mean, imagine when bad things happen, you end up going to court and people want to know who did what. This is a fantastic tool who, that records all of that stuff. Yeah, I think I agree, Stephen. Just to, to add to your little example of uh, when you were at Sage and you had 80,000 people using your cloud service, uh, at Iontree, we actually use P4C in our disaster recovery solution. So if you're, if you're a client who's uh, um, subscribed to our disaster recovery as a service solution, which we did discuss in the, I think the second webinar we had, um, when we uh, simulate disasters or when you actually have a disaster, Plan for Continuity is the tool that we actually use to manage that process. So uh, every quarter, we actually uh, have a plan which we, we activate as a simulation and we run through it exactly as if you'd had a disaster in your business, some kind of cyber disaster in this case. And then we send a report at the end, which you can put in your audit file. And I think what's really important, and Troy did mention this briefly, is in today's world with audit requirements and particularly compliance requirements, this is a fantastic tool because, uh, you know, Troy said this as well, but when we did a bit of research, when we were designing this tool, and we went to uh, CFOs and CEOs of, of companies and said, do you have a disaster recovery plan or business continuity plan? Almost all of them said yes. And when we asked to see it, they said, oh, it's somewhere in the strong room in a, in a file. I don't know when we last looked at it and, and um, w really wasn't relevant anymore. Um, yeah. So that's, that's the end of the series of webinars. There's just one more slide if you can move on, Troy. Dave, can I just say one other thing before we continue? Yeah. Um, this is a very flexible tool. I don't want people just to think that it's only for disasters. It could be for general stuff that happens in a business. Um, you know, what do you do Great. if uh, you have an insurance claim? Uh, what do you do if there's a fire? There's so much, you know, it really is up to your imagination. It's just a beautiful tool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that, that's that's a that's a good point. I mean, uh, we're just to come relate that to how we're seeing um, partners and the clients use it. I mean, there are partners and clients who are creating simple plans like onboarding an employee, right? Because of all the different moving parts, you know, we got to order a laptop and you know talk to HR, et cetera, et cetera. Or when someone leaves an organization, um, it's about automating that business process where partners and clients are really starting to see a lot of benefit it was on that point where we're actually working with a partner now strategically in Texas, nice, nice big partner. They are talking about then drawing this to COVID guys. Um, Texas is talking about, okay, they're getting prepared now to let people, you know, out of their homes, so to speak. And um, he wants to create a plan that, walks everybody through moving your organization back from your remote position, which everybody's in today, back into the office. Because it's not just as simple as, okay, pick up your laptops and stuff and come home, right? Because they recognize that data is now sprawled potentially. And there's a lot of different things that need to be considered in that migration effectively that's going to happen. And the reason why, and I thought that's incredibly creative because it's not going to be, okay, just take the latch out of the cage and everybody's going to run to the office. It's going to be organized. They'll probably start off with, you know, five people back, 10 people back, the same way that we've gotten into our state today. Um, and then there's going to be a lot of different dependencies that, that come with that. You know, the assets, um, bring uh, the data back, et cetera. So really creative, just really emphasizing the fact that um, it's the, the value of being able to automate a business process is as almost as equal in value as uh, the continuity plans themselves that are in there. Thanks, Troy. Yeah. Uh, so before I talk about the points that you're seeing on your screen now, I just wanted to add before we forget that we primarily sell, sell P4C through uh, managed service provider partners. And if you are uh, a, part, a managed service provider watching this or a reseller or 
IT support company. This is really a great tool to use across your client base um, to manage that, that in those plant environments effectively. Um, just, to, just to wrap up, I think this slide really talks about the benefits of the cloud and, and uh, uh, clearly everything we've discussed in this series of webinars is some kind of cloud um, facility or, or, or element. Um, what, what really this gives you is, is total business continuity because you're not reliant on anything in your environment in order to, to carry on transacting as long, well you are, as long as you've got an internet connection and a device which can connect you to that um, cloud-based service. It also allows you to work remotely very easily when, uh, when the lockdown, in fact, four days before the lockdown was announced in South Africa, uh, we decided to send everyone home from our entry to work. And all that happened is they took their laptops home, plugged them in and carried on working. It's, it's as if nothing actually changed except that we can't um, have lunch together. <clears throat> As you might have seen if you watched our webinars, every one of these facilities has some kind of um, console that you access in the cloud, some kind of management console or smart console that enables you to keep track of everything that's happening across every element of your business. And uh, Stephen often likes to um, add to this, but it really gives you a sense of control no matter where you are. I completely understand if you have an environment where you've got a server in your office, you might say, but I can log on to, you know, the task manager or the active directory or whatever it is and see what's going on. But you can't do that if you're not in the office. Um, so uh, this really gives you a sense of control. It allows you to, to um, have predictable spending and minimal capex. And I don't think we should underestimate that. If you don't have to uh, budget for um, CapEx expenditure, new servers, uh, PABXs, um, stuff like that, you, you really can minimize your uh, CapEx and predict your spend correctly. And in a lot of cases, cost savings, we saw with the, the voice over IP solution, changing from a 10 user telecom analog system to a Euphoria VoIP, you could save 2000 Rand a month, which is, which is not a small amount of money. Um, so I think the benefits of the cloud are really um, great. Yaka, back to you. Cool, thank you very much, Troy. Um, the poll is up. Uh, I see there's been a few votes casted. Um, so if you can, before you exit, please just vote on that poll. Um, Everybody that attended today and actually just everybody that attended this entire series, thank you very much. Um, I think I mentioned it in one of the previous webinars that uh, we've received great feedback, an excellent response, and we are actually thinking of maybe keeping this going. Um, we, we do have a couple of other subjects in mind, so um, stay tuned, check out your inbox every day so that uh, if we do actually decide to, to have a, one or two other webinars, um, you can register for it and enjoy it with us. Um, but that's it for now. Thank you very much and uh, have a great day further. Guys, thanks a hell of a lot. I thought these were great. Thank you. Cheers. Um, Yaka, before you go, there's a, there's a question. No, it's not a question. It's just a thank you from Jim. Jim has been, I think Jim, you attended every single web webinar and you've uh, actually engaged and asked questions. So appreciate that. To the rest of the guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers, Troy. Bro. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Bye.